<clears throat> and here we have the isosceles triangle theorem. And again, it says what we know about isosceles triangles is that they have at least two congruent sides. It says that if you have two congruent sides, then you automatically know you also have two congruent angles, specifically the angles opposite or across the figure from those sides. So across the figure from this side would be angle B. Across the figure from this one would be angle C. If we know these two sides are congruent, we also know these two angles are congruent. The converse, which remember when we did statements, converse, you switch the if and the then, which is exactly what happens here. We, instead of starting with congruent sides, we start out knowing we have congruent angles. And if you have two congruent angles, then you know that the sides opposite those angles are also congruent. I also want to review the parts of an isosceles triangle. So you have your congruent sides. Those are called legs. The non-congruent side down here is called the base. The congruent pair of angles that we had are base angles, since they're at the end, each end of the base. And this last angle up here where the legs come together is called the vertex angle. And that's just to help when you have a question and they use some of that terminology. It says, given that triangle MNP is isosceles, the two base angles are 2y and 4y minus 20. Now, they don't tell me this time which one is the vertex angle. They just tell me that I have an isosceles triangle. So I'm going to draw a picture of an isosceles triangle and label it as MNP. Okay. The next thing I need to do is put in the information, the other information they gave me. It says the two base angles. Remember the base angles are those that are congruent. They're across from our congruent sides. So N and P in this case would be my base angles. They are 2Y and 4Y minus 20 are their two measures. What is the value of Y? Well, what do we know about the base angles of a isosceles triangle? We know the base angles are the two congruent angles. So the equation we can set up to find y is that these two are equal. So we can say that 2y must equal 4y minus 20. And we can solve from there. We want to get our y's on the same side. So maybe I'll move this 4y. It was a positive 4y. So if I subtract 4y from both sides, that will move it over to where I need it. 2 minus 4 gives a negative 2y equals, and left here we have negative 20. Our last step, we have negative 2 times y, so I'm going to do the opposite and divide both sides by negative 2. Negative 20 divided by negative 2 gives me 10. And that is all they asked for. They didn't ask for the measure of the angles. They just asked for the value of y, so I know I'm done. y equals 10. Okay, I'm going to go through another example like that. If you want to pause, if you are good and you want to stop, that's fine. If you want to pause and see and do it yourself and then see if you got it right, that would also be a good option. So again, we're given an isosceles triangle with vertices M, N, and P. It doesn't tell us specifically which angles are which, so I'm just going to label. <clears throat> it's isosceles, and the base angles are measure 4x and 8x minus 64. Again, the base angles are those angles across from the, the congruent sides. So this angle here could be 4x, and this angle here could be the other measure, 8x minus 64. <clears throat> what is the value of, and this should say x right here. <clears throat> Again, the isosceles triangle theorem tells us if we have a pair of congruent sides, the angles across from those sides are also congruent. So I know that 4x should equal 8x minus 64, and I can solve from there. Again, I want to 
isolate the x, get it all on the same side. So I have a positive 8x. I'm going to move it over to the side, other side by subtracting 8x. 4 minus 8 leaves me with negative 4x equals negative 64. And my last step here, I would need to divide both sides by negative 4. which gives me x equals positive 16. And again, that is all they asked for. They did not ask me to plug it back in and find the measure of the angle. So I am done.